Brian Vinti. And I'm a senior at Woodstock High School. I was born and raised in the state of Georgia and I have one younger sister. For my entire life I've had a heart condition that has affected the path that I've been able to take. I started working at Van Houston when I was 16 in retail and I was recently promoted to the manager of a store. I'm excited to go to college and see what opportunities are available, although I did for my senior project construction project estimating. I do not think that it is the right route for me. The reason I chose to do this project was because my dad, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather all worked in construction, so I wanted to see if this would be something that I would be interested in doing. For my MGRP, I chose to analyze whether estimating the old way or the new way was more effective. This helped me get more in-depth knowledge of um, how it was done in the past and how it is done now. So basically what I did is I did construction project estimating. And, bas and what that is is um, when a company wants you to build something, they have to, they want to find a company that's going to build it for the best price. So what they do is they send out emails to all the different companies that are local. And once they send it to all the different companies, they give you um, an invitation to bid the job. Um, and that's what I did. Um, this is just uh, some pictures of me and my project facilitator um, holding the final product working on the product. Um, we first started um, by him showing me how to do it the old way, because the old way is the more complicated way, because it's a lot easier to understand the new way to do it if you start with the old way. First thing that you had to do is you had to get out a um, basic set of drawings, which is like really, really big. And you have to go down with markers, and you have to label every single wall type one by one. It takes forever. It took me like 20 hours just to do it the old way. The new way um, only took me 10 hours. And basically, the new way is a lot easier because you just download it into a software and then you can just point and click anything like normal. So I'll go to my here. Okay. Um, I did mine in a prison. So this is an example of what the bid invite looks like when they send it to you. Um, when they send you the bid invite, this is what it looks like. Um, all you have to do with this sheet is you just have to print it, and then after you print it, uh, you just fill out yes if you'd like to accept, and you write the name of the company down at the bottom. You don't have to send this one in until after you're actually done bidding the job, so you just print this one out first just to kind of get a feel for it. And there's a link right here um, that's a special FTP site that they send you and this has all of the drawings and everything that they want you to do. So you go onto that website and after you get there you download this the set of drawings that they want. This is what it looks like when it begins. So once you download these into a software called OST <coughs> and QuickBit, uh, OST means on-screen takeoff so that's like the first stages of everything. Um, then you go through and first thing you do is you set your conditions, but just once you set your conditions, you go through and you label the, the different types. I went through one by one and labeled each one of these wall types by different colors and everything, and every single one of these colors on every single drawing means something different. Um, every symbol, everything means something different. Now, this is an example of like kind of like a key or like a legend of every symbol and everything that I've put on here. This is like, this page is a lot longer than this. I just picked the first two pages just to put on here. Um, I think it was actually seven pages full of nothing but tabs and colors and shapes. So um, then um, this is the conditions detail sheet right here. Um, what that is is it's basically just narrowing down the conditions that you used. Um, it's it's pointing out the different kind of conditions you use for material cost and also for labor. So it just kind of breaks it down into simple terms right here. And you have to do this right here for every single condition that you have. And there's usually a long line of conditions. Um, then after you do that, you go and you find this vendor quote sheet here. For me, I did the Intercontinental Exchange. They wanted to uh, put an office space on a 14th floor building. So uh, 
the software that you have puts all the information that you put into QuickBid and OST, and it prints this one out right here for you, and you send this to multiple vendors in the area to see if you can get a pricing on all your materials. This is an example of what it looks like whenever you get a response back from one of the uh, people. This is Capital Materials. They gave us all of their information, uh, how much it would cost for everything that we needed. So we decided to go with them. And after all that is done, then once everything is put into, once you put all your prices from your vendor quote into, into OST and QuickBid, it gives you this bid summary here. Um, bid summary basically just takes everything, like your overhead, your profit, everything, it calculates it and makes one total price there at the bottom that they can look at. Then you type up your final proposal. This, you're supposed to type by hand. Luckily, they had a draft that I could type it all in. First thing what it does is it basically just narrows, it has a breakdown right here of just, you know, simple organization of the entire cost. Then scope included and scope excluded. What that means is scope included means it's the stuff that we are going to do when we're working, and scope excluded means the stuff that we're not gonna do when we're working. Um, Scope included is a little more broad, but scope excluded is a little more narrow, just because, you know, we'll do pretty much anything, but there's, you know, there's a certain set of stuff that they have to know that we cannot do. And then there is uh, qualifications over here that are pretty standard. Um, basically just saying, think the, we, we price this based off of a certain kind of assumptions. You know, we can't assume everything, but we have to assume certain things, like whether they're gonna work at night, or if they're gonna have to work seven days a week, four days a week, you know. So we put it right here in our qualifications, all of our parameters and what we're willing to, like, you know, what they, what the parameters they need to stay in for the price to stay the same. Because um, we don't want them to get unhappy if, you know, the price doesn't end up being what they agreed to. And then we send that to them and we wait to hear back and see if they accepted our bid. Now, if they accept our bid, what we do is we create a job cost summary in quick bid as well. This right here is basically just a narrow breakdown of all of the cost and material and labor. Um, and then after, you, after it's all broken down, um, then you create a production report, which is basically the same thing, but this is the, this is the stuff that you send to the people that are on Chandler the Chandler Tenney, please report to guidance. Chandler Tenney, please report to guidance. This, this is what you send them kind of as a reference to the people that are um, out there, so that way they can stay in the parameters that they all need you know, to stay in. But um, thank you for your time. Is there any questions? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you.